What's going on guys? This is Vinyl like Puma, back with another Fallout 4 video, and today I'd like to go over another Creation Club item, and that is the recently released Sentinel Control System Companion. Now before we start, I'm mostly going to be reviewing the Sentinel Power Armor by itself based on its potential applications, and by comparing it to similar mods that already exist. With that in mind, it's worth mentioning that this particular item, like a number of other Creation Club items, is included with a quest, and I am not going to be reviewing that particular quest here to prevent spoilers for those of you that decide to pick this thing up. But I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and discuss the Sentinel Control System. Now this thing costs about 700 Creation Club credits, making it around $6-8, to $8, depending on how many Creation Club credits you buy and the description for the Sentinel Control System reads as follows. Before the Great War, the geniuses at West Tech and General Atomics International had an idea. What if they combined unmanned suits of power armor with an autonomous artificial intelligence? Their single, highly experimental prototype was eventually recovered by the Brotherhood of Steel, and is now in your hands. Not quite robot, much more than human, the Sentinel Control System will shift the balance of power on any battlefield. Also comes with two unlockable power armor paint jobs. Based on this entry, my guess is that this particular piece of content was created by Bethesda themselves, as Bethesda usually includes the name of the modder that worked on whatever the creation is. So, unlike a few other creations, I suspect this one was either developed in-house by Bethesda, or if it was developed by a member of the modding community, they decided to not include their name. However, let's go over some of the features, starting with the paint jobs. Now, like the creation description says, this particular companion comes with two new power armor skins. One of these is the pretty nostalgic Brotherhood Outcast Power Armor paint job that comes standard, while the other is a new Hot Rodder skin, which makes your power armor look blue with a white stripe down the middle. So it sort of looks like a hot rod or a muscle car. Both of these paint jobs can be applied to T45, T51, T60, and X01, which is pretty decent, as the Outcast armor will allow you to boost intelligence by one if you have all of the pieces painted, while the Hot Rodder paint boosts agility, like most of the other Hot Rodder paints. Of the two, the Outcast armor might actually be more useful, as the slight increase to intelligence could potentially increase your experience point gain ever so slightly and when combined with other power armor customizations, like the internal database for the helmet piece, the boosts you should be receiving to intelligence are pretty nice, so I suppose there is something to be said for that. Now, when compared to Don Kane's excellent T45 Outcast Power Armor paint mod, you'll notice that Bethesda's more official version is a lot less saturated. Between the two, I think Don Keen's take on the Outcast paint job is definitely better, but I suppose it is worth mentioning that the Bethesda version is available for console users, which there is certainly something to be said for that. Overall, the included paint jobs are okay, but I wouldn't say they're life-changing or anything. As for the Sentinel Power Armor itself, you can obtain it by completing the Malevolent Malfunction side quest, and as the title of this creation suggests, this is basically a companion mod. Nothing more and nothing less. Perhaps a great way to think of this thing is that it's sort of like a cross between Dance and an Automatron companion. The Sentinel Armor is like Dance in the sense that its default weapon is a laser rifle, and you could potentially give it and modify it with different power armor pieces. However, it's more like an automatron in the sense that you can swap out the different personalities to change its voice. So, if you wanted to make this thing sound like a sentry bot, or if you wanted to upgrade that T-45 to something that has much better resistances, you can definitely do that. Also, like most other companions, you can give this thing pretty much any weapon that you yourself can use. However, like other companions, you'll have to give this thing a fair amount of ammo, as the Sentinel Armor does consume ammo on weapons that aren't its default. Thankfully, I think you'll find that the default laser rifle is pretty decent, so you probably may not even need to give this companion any weapons. I'd say that one of the major upsides that the Sentinel Armor has is that the Power Armor pieces that are equipped don't appear to take damage while in use. 
This is quite useful as most other companions that can wear power armor ultimately can have those pieces break, which can be a pretty big headache. Also, it's pretty nice that the sentinel armor can be used with other companions and doesn't appear to affect the lone wanderer perk, meaning that you can gain some of the bonuses that the lone wanderer perk provides, or if you don't want to use that perk at all, you can always travel with an additional companion for two companions at once, which is pretty great. When it comes to downsides, I'd say that one of the major ones is that this thing can't be modified at a power armor workbench. Instead, you have to modify power armor pieces on another frame and then give those power armor pieces to the power armor suit, which is pretty annoying as it would be far simpler if you could just command this thing to go to a workbench and turn itself off so you could modify it. I also haven't figured out a way to turn this thing off, and from what I can tell, in order to get this thing to not follow you anymore, you have to make sure to set it in standby mode and then remember where you placed it. And with that in mind, I could foresee the possibility that you end up forgetting where you place this thing at some point during your playthrough, making it very difficult to find again. With that said though, I will admit that I have not tested whether this thing is compatible with the Vault Tech Workshop's Companion Finder, so maybe you might not have any issues finding this thing at all. But that of course requires you to have that DLC. Ultimately, and like I said earlier, this is nothing more than an additional companion mod that you can have around, which may satisfy some. However, I've got some of my own thoughts about this thing that I'd like to share with you guys. While the Sentinel control system is cool as you can get another companion, I also feel like this piece of content is pretty disappointing as well. The main reason for that is because the Sentinel control system resembles a number of pre-existing Fallout 4 mods like Kentington's Power Armor Autopilot and Visorius's Patriot Power Armor Companion. Given that both of these mods are free, it's worth mentioning that if you've got the PC version of the game, you're really just better off saving your money and or Creation Club credits and downloading either one of these mods from the Nexus. It's also worth mentioning that if you're on Xbox One, Visorius's Patriot mod still appears to be available at Bethesda.net at the time of making this video. So, like the PC, this is a free mod that accomplishes basically what the Sentinel armor does, but for free. The only reason I could foresee you taking the time to actually buy the Sentinel control system is if you're on PS4, where you don't have access to those external assets. Given these facts, I honestly wish Bethesda, or whoever ended up making this piece of content, put considerably more effort into it. For example, something that might have been really cool was if you could use the Sentinel power armor as a normal power armor, then exit, and then activate a toggle on your controller or keyboard that switches on the AI mode. This would have been amazing as the Sentinel armor could have been used as a decoy while the player sneaks around and picks enemies off with silenced weapons via stealth. And this could have potentially really changed up Fallout 4's combat and made the price of admission for the Sentinel control system far more worth it. The ability to go back and forth like this would be really cool, and perhaps the goal could have been to emulate what we've seen with Iron Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, where Tony Stark's Iron Man suits can function both dependently and independently of the user. Additionally, or even alternatively, it would have been cool to see the Sentinel control system come with its own weapons, sort of like we've already seen with the Automatron add-ons robots. Being able to equip buzzsaws or melee attachments in the place of the hand pieces, and or allowing us to equip shoulder-mounted fat mans or missile launchers to the Sentinel power armor would have been amazing. And provided that the Sentinel armor was pilotable, mapping the shoulder-mounted weapons to the grenade button could probably end up working out quite well. Ultimately, I think it's pretty easy for you guys to see where I'm going with all of this, as the ideas here could be endless. Bethesda, or whoever made this piece of content, should have truly gone wild and done some things that modders either couldn't do or would take modders a really long time to make. Because as is, this thing doesn't really add all that much that can't be accomplished with a few mods installed. But here's my verdict. 
it shouldn't really be that much of a surprise at this point, but I think I would only really recommend this to someone that plays on the PS4 version of Fallout 4 and has no plans on getting a PC or an Xbox One at any point in the future. Maybe you could wait and get this thing for 50% off, but even then, I'd still just recommend that you download one of the mods that I mentioned earlier, as both do essentially the same thing. Not to mention that you can get Don Kane's slick Outcast Power Armor paint job on the PC version of the game, meaning that the only thing that you're really missing out on here is the Malevolent Malfunction side quest mission, as well as the blue Hot Router Power Armor paint that's been included with this whole package. Now, I don't know if Bethesda allows people to eventually update whatever goes up on the Creation Club, but I think if more features were added to this thing, like the ability to quickly swap from piloted to autonomous, then I think this could potentially be more worth it. Granted, I still think that 700 Creation Club credits is still pretty steep, but 50% off at that point would be more acceptable to me. So ultimately, I'd say you should really only get this thing if you're on the PS4, otherwise you're probably just better off saving your Creation Club credits for something else that you want. Alright guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you have the Sentinel control system, are you a big fan of it, or are you like me and you're a little disappointed? Feel free to leave that in the comment section below. Otherwise, like this video if you liked it, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, thank you all so much for supporting the channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.